A while back, I created a video for the unorthodox FPS config, a unique config that tried to reimagine how an FPS could be played with a controller. It's been a while since I've done anything with that concept and wanted to do an update regarding the config. But first, I really want to explain why and how I ended up here. I've always been interested in getting the most out of my input devices, and this led me to be rather critical of how I interact with games. Going back to my teenage years when I was playing Deus Ex and Jedi Knight 2, I noticed that movement with WASD wasn't great for those games and their long list of abilities. Both of these games used F1 through F12 to quickly select an ability, which meant moving your left hand from WASD and losing the ability to move. This was when I decided that movement and aiming could be on the same hand, which would allow my other hand to focus primarily on actions. And that led to this config, which I used for several years. All movement was handled on the mouse buttons, which freed up my left hand to handle all of the actions. I never had to give up the ability to aim, look, or move to do anything. Fast forward to last year. Let's take a look at a generic config for an FPS on the Steam controller. Movement is typically handled by the left pad or joystick, and aiming is handled by a combination of the right pad and gyro. I'm going to assume that most people will stick with the industry standard of aiming on left trigger and firing on right trigger, but I like using the Steam controller to its fullest potential and aggressively use the dual stage aspect of the triggers. As Valve prominently pointed out in their original trailer for the Steam controller, I use the right trigger soft pull for aiming and the full pull for firing. I've done the same on the left for jumping and crouching. And finally, I have use and reload on the right grip. This is my basic FPS template. While it does have some unique aspects to it, the industry standards can still be seen as the foundation to it. At the time of making the unorthodox config, I had been using some variation of this standard gamepad for about two and a half years. In that time, I came to find some flaws with it. The main one that I wanted to address was the right trigger. Having aim on soft pull and fire on full pull felt great, and to this day I still quite enjoy having those actions there, but it does mean that I can't change my aiming or zoom state while shooting, and I can't activate both simultaneously, though the aggressive hip fire setting can get very close to it. This is an easy fix, but I also began to focus on the shortcomings of movement. When it comes to FPS titles, I prefer putting WASD on the left pad rather than joystick move. I don't know why, don't ask, but digital movement feels more natural to me with a first person camera. But the more I thought about it, the more I believed that I was underutilizing the touchpad. I mean, this thing could be used for a radial or touch menu and I was assigning four buttons to it like a basic D-pad. So, I decided that since I'm using digital movement bindings, I should place them on digital keys, thus opening up the touchpad for more complex ideas. I was also playing Counter-Strike at the time, and found stutter stepping, uh, rapidly and randomly switching between left and right strafing, to be impossible to do at a worthwhile speed. Finally, I felt that two input sources doing the same thing was wasted potential. Both the gyro and touchpad controlled the camera and aiming, and I began wondering if I even needed to do this. After all, there were a few Steam Controller users who had found success with gyro-only aiming, and if I was going to overhaul the top and left sides of the config, why not do the right as well? These three core ideas are what led to the unorthodox config. I ended up placing movement on the triggers, continuing to make great use of the dual stage feature, and used dual radials on the pads the input styles that gave the pads the most potential. And this addressed all of my issues. I could stutter step quickly, I could do a variety of actions without giving up any others, I could change my aiming state while firing, and I felt like I was actually using the Steam Controller to a higher potential. Instead of forcing it into a mold, I had built something completely new for it. Using this config was tough though. There wasn't a single muscle memory that I could transfer over to it, so... I did what anyone would do, and I started up the next FPS game I had ready to play from my backlog and finished it on the hardest difficulty, which just so happened to be Battlefield Bad Company 2. Side note, the campaign has not aged well. Through these six or so hours, I found quite a few shortcomings with the config. First, I can't use the dual finger technique for bumpers and triggers. I just can't. I've tried. It doesn't work. 
My middle fingers like so much dexterity that the soft pulls might as well not even exist. What this means for me is that the bumpers become useless. I'd never want to give up movement, so my fingers would never be able to shift from the triggers to the bumpers, so I couldn't bind anything there that could be used while walking. While this isn't a huge issue, I mean, I'm really only giving up two buttons, it also means that I'm not using the device to its fullest potential, which was one of the core ideas behind this. The other issue was with aiming. Gyro-only aiming is actually quite doable. However, to keep from resetting my hands all the time, I went with a medium to high sensitivity, and I did find success with it. I had plenty of speed for doing gross aiming without needing to reset often, and I also had a good amount of control for fine aiming. But I couldn't find a good way to keep the controller steady while pressing the fire button, which I had as right pad click. I had some luck with minimum movement threshold, but not enough that I would want to exclusively use gyro aiming. And that's where I'm at now. The unorthodox FPS config is flawed in its own ways, and I'm not sure that I could fix it without a massive overhaul. So, for the most part, I have scrapped the experiment. I still have the template saved, and I might try to address its issues one day, but for the time being, I've concluded that project. Since then, I have slipped back into the comfort of my basic template, and I've begun refining some of the settings on it. Thanks to working with the unorthodox config, I was more comfortable with some of the advanced settings on the mouse input style and have moved away from the stock values on stuff like MMT and smoothing. But that doesn't mean that I'm finished experimenting. I still know that my basic template is flawed and I'd still like to push the Steam controller in new directions. For the time being, I'll probably end up using a more traditional config, but sometime in the future I'd like to go back to the drawing board and take another shot at an unusual config.